Mobile was a blast. We got to hang out with family and conquer our fears of cliff jumping. <laughs> it's time for the next island on our 40 day tour through the Philippines. Sikor is a smaller, quieter island with a slower pace of life in comparison to Mobile. But naturally, we were so curious on how it was going to be there and if there was anything to really do. So we rented a scooter and went out exploring for three days. No specific plans. I mean, we're living that island life, right? These are the top things we did on the island. Don't worry, I tried to skip most of the lounging parts. So today, my family goes back to America and we continue our journey. It's going to be a mission to get to the next island. Logistically speaking, there's many, many steps. And so Alejandro is going to show you what exactly it takes to get to the next stop. Step two now. So I think we're on here for one hour and 30 minutes until we get to Bato Terminal. And then we're going to take a tricycle to the port. That's our next two steps. This, this uh, our lady at our hotel did it because there were so many steps. I was like, can you please write it down? <laughs> I'm going to forget. All right. There's our next tuk-tuk. This one's pretty nice. I like the all black. Ah, it's <laughs> tiny. minute tricycle ride but it's literally it yeah. from the bus to the first ferry terminal yeah and then what does our note say how long is it 30 minutes it's a 30 minute ferry 30 minute ferry yeah. to the next ferry terminal then we got to hop off hop on another ferry right we hop we get so from the ferry when we hop off we get another tricycle to the next port oh okay i'm missing a step yeah so and then 30 minute ferry hop tricycles. off tricycle port and then back ferry. on the ferry again. And then try to go to our hotel. Yeah. We're getting closer. Getting closer. It's a very strange um, infrastructure when like the bus can clearly get here because there's a giant bus <laughs> right there. But it stops there, that's the last stop, and then you gotta take a trice try. And the price for the bus was 109 each. 109 each, yep. For a, a one hour uh, one and a half hour bus ride mm -hmm. and it's 300 for the both of us so 150 each for a 10 minute tricycle ride yeah huge right. difference yeah. Time to check into our hotel. We had a ride, another trike, and then another ferry, and now we're finally almost our check in. Did you see them drive this? Ooh, it was sketchy. After completing all the steps to get to Sikahor, we were pretty exhausted and actually surprised we didn't get lost or miss our two ferries. I think we were just slowly adjusting to the island's way of life in the Philippines. We rented a scooter and we headed to our hotel. On the way to our hotel though, we saw a sign labeled Old Balit Tree. But after chilling at our hotel for a while, we decided to do one last thing before the end of the day. Old Tree. Old tree. What, what is it? What's the, like, what's the significance? It's just really old. Oh, how old? How old, is, how old is the tree? Uh, 500 years. Wow, that is old. Really old. There's a big one in there. I know, there's a couple of huge ones. Oh. <laughs> I don't like that feeling. I don't like it. I do not like it. It feels very weird. It feels very weird. They're gentle for how big they are. They're just like... Here's another big one right here. Come 
Kind of unsettling for sure. Pretty much the top of uh, Sikajor Island to check out some butterflies. Butterfly garden! Oh my god, that one's so pretty, babe. So yeah, we're at a butterfly conservation area at the top of a big hill here. About 20 minute ride. No, actually a little longer than that from where we're staying. And yeah, let's see what kind of butterflies we run into here. how underdeveloped it is like as I'm looking at the distance in any direction I literally cannot see hardly any buildings like I really have to kind of look and pinpoint certain spots to see the buildings which is so cool that it's just it's just raw land There's the cave. A quick drive and we ran into the cave, but it says no cave guide, no entry. And we're on island life here. We really don't want guides and stuff. We want to explore on our own, so we're gonna have to skip it. Plus we've seen a lot of caves, so I was kind of hoping they would just do things on our own, but I think maybe maybe someone got hurt or I don't know. So we're gonna skip it and keep keep driving on and see what else we find. I don't know how we ran out of service, like, damn, there's service everywhere. What? You don't want to do it now because the road's shitty? Go to Hakunor. All right, we made it to Lugnasen Falls. Small environmental fee. It's all hundred pain now. And then we get to go check it out. Already, it's a little bit off the beaten path, so it's definitely a lot more desolate than uh, the main waterfall. And we'll see. California. We'll see how it is. We're hiking our way down. Hopefully, it's not too far. It is a very hot day here in Sikijor. Sikihor. Sikihor. I love the name, even though it's hard for me to pronounce. I, I gotta Google like what's the history of that name because it's very interesting. 
All right, we went a little bit of combo driving, a little bit of main road driving, a little bit of um, some backcountry farmland stuff. It's kind of cool just seeing people, like most of them are hanging out under these bamboo homemade canopy things until they get work to pick up a, somebody or a tour and stuff. So it's kind of like, I love just like the Islander vibes. Like you're just gonna mellow out unless there's something to do, especially midday when it's so freaking hot. It's really hot today. But with that said, I feel personally that it's less humid than the other parts of Southeast Asia that we've been. Oh, yeah. Vietnam, Cambodia, Malaysia. And this is a dry heat and it's something that we're more used to being from California, especially Southern California. This dry heat, we can handle this. But kick in a little humidity and we're little wimps. I hear water. That's brave. <laughs> Where is he? Oh! Oh, he's over there! Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Refreshing? Yeah. How was the head, Refreshing. How was the head massage? Like, like, <laughs> not too powerful, huh? No, that's not powerful at all. <laughs> It barely touches your head. Can you touch the ground there? No, I can't. Get deep quick. Yeah. Okay, we're done hanging out at the waterfall, and what we're doing now is they have this like cold plunge area that's just a little short walk away from the waterfall area. It's supposed to be a cold spring, they say. So we're gonna check that out right now, and hopefully it's not ice cold. But either way, ice cold or not, we're jumping in. It's like a type of aqueduct. Yeah, it feels less cold than the other water. Or maybe that's because we have direct sun exposure. Like... <laughs> you gotta bustle up. You gotta do muscle up. All right, that was kind of a bust, but at least it was just a short walk. Water wasn't colder. Nice and sunny though, so if you are cold from the shady jungly waterfall, you can come here, get some sun, and be halfway in water. So that's cool. What we're gonna do now is climb back up and head to the beach. made our way to a random beach. We didn't want to go to the same beach, Peloton. Peloton Beach. That's the main beach in the area that everyone goes to and we checked that out yesterday. And it was a beautiful beach. We really enjoyed it, but we wanted to see something different today. We drove pretty much up and down the road trying to find access, which was kind of difficult. A lot of these places you have to like go through a business. I don't know, I was a little bit intimidated. I didn't want to go on like private property and stuff like that. Um, eventually, like if you just pick a random business that's on the beach, I think you'll just have beach access. But we found a random alleyway and um, one of the guys that's building out a hotel here was like, yeah, sure, you can have access. So we just parked next to his establishment that's not built yet right behind us here. And it's literally just us two on this entire beach. <laughs> great for tanning, not great for swimming. We're at low tide right now and it is pretty darn low. Like you have to go pretty far out to even swim. Also, I think the theme is I feel so lazy on this island. It's so relaxing. We're literally just running into the same tourist everywhere we go. Like there's not that many people here. <laughs> the same people are everywhere. And it's just like, I don't know, there's this vibe of just like, it's okay to just do nothing, which is weird. And yeah, for now, this is us, beach bums. Okay, our last stop for the night. We're literally at a mobile bar that's on the side of a road that's gonna have a pretty awesome view for sunset. And so that's why we picked it. It's literally right behind us. I ordered a margarita. What'd you order? I ordered the mango mojito. Their mangoes are so good here, so I just had to get it. He recommended this one too, the Don Fable special, which I almost got, but I'm not a really big rum person. It has rum and coconut rum, so mojito. I decided to mojito it up. That sounds amazing. And I got you the Don Margarita, which is tequila, triple sec, fermented pineapple, and local calamansi. Skills. Oh, with the lighting, it's perfect. Um, the 
I love my it mango pieces punch. in here. It packs a punch. Does it? Day three of exploring Sigajor Island, and actually we're not exploring, we're just hanging out right here at our awesome little stay with a great view of the ocean above all the trees. Alejandro's doing some work, and we have one mission today, and that is to see the main waterfall. And it's now the afternoon, it's around 3 p.m. So we did not get up early to beat the crowd, so we thought what's the second best option. Maybe it's in the afternoon after all the tours are done because they last entry is at 4.30 and I think they close at 5. So we're thinking if we get there around 3.30-ish, um, maybe it'll be a lot more empty because everyone else will be headed back into town because it's pretty far away from the main town of Sikajor. I think it's like 40 minutes by scooter. We're gonna head out now and hopefully have a nice view of the waterfall, have a nice relaxing time because it's still very hot and sunny and not overly crowded and dealing with crazy people jumping off this and that <laughs> left and right. So let's go. Hello. We're in. We did it. All right, we're going all the way to the top and working our way down. Alejandro's <laughs> already jumped in. I'm about to jump in right now. He says it feels really, really good. And yeah, everyone's leaving, so we we'll get a little bit of more free space, but I mean it is three tiers, so it can accommodate a lot of people. But um, it's just nice to be next to the waterfall and just relax and not have to be like the tons and tons of crowds. Oh, hold on! You found yourself a rock. Little rock. <laughs> it's pushing me. There's one last pool to check out over there. This is the second one. I like the highest one so far the most. Yeah. Because there's less rocks, more room to swim. Yeah. And the rocks don't hurt as much. Yeah, and um But it's also I like going underneath the the the, the waterfall. There wasn't a ton of things to do in Sikahor, and that's really the beauty of it. Coming from an intense 45 day trip in Vietnam, it felt weird to have so much free time. But by day 3, we started to really enjoy exploring, lounging, and having these long days to relax and live stress free. Sikahor was a good intro to how the smaller islands of the Philippines were going to be, and both Alejandro and I were thinking we can get used to this lifestyle. <laughs> 